Hello grade 12. So this is now lesson 8 on the trigonometry booklets that I sent to you and that are also available on your Google Classroom. I've also put the link uh, in the description below this video we, where you can go and get these booklets. Alright, so we are on lesson 8 in this booklet that is uh, problem solving in two dimensions using mainly the sine rule, the cosine rule and the area rule. Now, this is a very usual question. How do you know when you should use the sine rule? When, you sh when should you use the cosine rule? When should you use the area rule? Okay, now, the sine rule, based the formula, it states that in any triangle, if you take the side A divided by that side B divided by that side C divided by that or the other way around. Basically, what it means is that if you have a triangle, okay, let's have any triangle A, B, C with sides A, B, and C. So basically what this rule is saying, if you take B divided by the sine of B, you must get exactly the same answer with taking A divided by the sine of A, same answer with taking C and dividing it by the sine of C. And the other way around is also possible where if you take sine A divided by A it should give you the same as sine B divided by B and sine C divided by C. Now when do you use this rule? Okay when two sides of a triangle and an angle opposite to one of the sides are known. Basically it means if you have a triangle okay uh, A, B, See, this, let's say you know this side, you know that side, you know that angle. So that means you're going to have to use sine rule there, right, to calculate the, the other angle or to calculate the other side. Okay, or if it happens that instead you know this other angle and these two sides, that means you're going to use the sine rule. Second condition is when one side of the triangle and at least two angles are known. So basically what it means is that if you have a triangle, let's call this one X, Y, Z. So if you have a triangle, you know this side, you know that angle, you know that other angle, you know these two angles. That means in that case, you must use the sine rule. Okay, now the cosine rule it's got this formula. It's presented in three ways because you can apply it from any side of the triangle. And this is what we call the reverse cosine rule. Right? So this is to find the missing sides. This one is to find the missing angles. Okay? So this one works when, when two sides and the included angle of the triangle are known. So if you have a triangle... Let's call this one again A, B, C. You know this side, you know that side. So the angle between the two sides that you know is what you call the included angle. That means you're going to use a cosine rule there. Now, if it happens that you have a triangle, we'll call this one X, Y, Z. Right, you know this side, you know that side, you know that side. You need to find this angle. So that means you're going to have to use this reverse cosine rule. Okay, the area rule is when you have to find the area of a triangle but you don't know the perpendicular height. So it's still possible to find that area. Make sure in your triangle, let's call this one A, B, C, you know one side, you know the other side, and you know the included angle. Then you can use your area rule okay now remember in if it's right angled then we're just going to use our usual trigonometric ratios your usual sign your usual cos your usual tan okay so we're going to get into some examples now to see how these work in two dimensions okay so let's get through example number one where we have to refer to that diagram 
okay so it's a circle with this triangle inside the side is eight that side is five that side is 60 degrees okay and this is 46 comma seven degrees so if you do the diagram calculate the following correct one decimal place the length of ln okay which one is ln there okay ln the length of ln okay ln is this length here now what you must ask yourself is in this triangle what is it that you know okay so we have a triangle here because we are going to get that answer from this triangle here this one now you may be wondering why did we choose that triangle because that's the one that we know something about the other triangle we don't know anything about it okay so this one we know this is five we know that's eight we know that's 60 degrees and that is an included angle yes you guessed it right we're going to use the cosine rule so the, we're going to use the cosine rule so l n squared according to the cosine rule is equal to that side eight squared plus that side five squared minus two times that side eight that side five and that and, and cos of that angle 60 degrees remember when you do this you find ln squared but we want ln itself so to find ln we're just going to take the square root of eight squared plus five squared minus two times eight times five times cos of 60. take the square root of the whole thing okay if i do that on the calculator i will have the square root of 8 squared plus 5 squared minus 2 times 8 times 5 times cos of 60 close that bracket close the whole bracket equals okay there's the answer 7 so that means ln is equal to 7 millimeters as i always say whatever length you find you must just write it in on the diagram so that because most of the time you will find that you're going to need that length to find the other other answers as you go along okay now the second question is asking us to find the magnitude of m angle m there is angle m there all right well there's something that we know from Euclidean geometry because this is a circle one two three four that's four sides it's a cyclic quadrilateral now if you remember the theorem of cyclic quads the opposite angles add up to 180 degrees right so what it then means is that in this question here angle M then will become equal to 180 degrees minus 60 degrees because these are opposite angles of cyclic quad and the answer is 120 degrees okay write it in because you find most of the time we are going to need that what else do they want us to find they want us to find the length of lm okay let me use another color for that the length of LM is what they want us to find. Well, this, where is LM? It's this length here. Right. So that means we're going to derive this length from this triangle here. Okay. Now, what do we know about this triangle? Well, we know this angle. We know that angle. We know that side. So that means we're going to utilize the sine rule. Okay, so the sine rule says this, right? So this is part three. The sine of 120 degrees divided by the opposite side, which is seven, is the same as, okay, 
that means I need to find that angle then, right? So let's find that angle quickly. Uh, this is 46.7, this is 120, so this is the third angle of a triangle. So N is equal to 180 minus 46,7 plus 120, which is equal to, okay, so let's do that with the calculator, 180 minus 46,7 plus 120, so that is 13,3 degrees. Okay, so we come back to our equation there. So it's the same as the sine of 13,3 degrees over Lm. Okay, now because we're solving for the denominator, we can switch these around. So what that now means is that Lm over 7 is equal to sine of 13,3 degrees over sine of 120 degrees. Right, multiply 7 both sides. So Lm is equal to sine 13,3 degrees times 7 over sine of 120 right so we're going to just quickly work this out on the calculator sine 13,3 close bracket times 7 over sine of 120 close bracket and that is 1,85. Oh, yes, the instructions say one uh, correct to one decimal place. So we're going to round this correct to one decimal place. And this is 1,9 millimeters. Okay, so second example, we've got this diagram here. Let's understand what it is about. So a cable car transport tourists across a valley between two mountains P and S. So that distance there. The angle of depression from A, of S from P is beta there. The angles of elevation of S and P are alpha degrees for that one, 30 degrees for that one. In addition, PS is 80 meters, RS is 60 meters. Okay, these are the kind of questions. Prove that the height of the mountain PQ, which is this length here, is given by that formula. So, what is it that we need to find? We need to find PQ, okay? That's length here. All right. How are we going to find it? Well, let's see. What do we have? This is the right angle, so that's 90. So, we're just going to use our trig ratios. This is 30 degrees. And this PR... You see that it's coming from this full triangle here, so we can find it, right? So, what does it mean, therefore? What it means, therefore, is that the sine of 30 degrees is equal to the opposite, which is PQ over the hypotenuse, which is PR. And if we cross multiply, we will find that PQ is equal to PR times the sine of 30 okay all right we can just leave it there for now because now we have to find the length of pr which one is pr well we have to find the length of pr and this pr okay so we're gonna have to use this triangle here right in order to generate that so now we need to find out from this triangle what information have we got and what can we use. Alright. Now let's quickly understand something about this angle S here. Because this is the angle of elevation from R to S which is alpha. So that means this is also going to become alpha because they alternate to each other. 
the angle of depression from there is beta and this is parallel to that so this is also going to be beta because they are alternating so what that means is that the angle s is equal to alpha plus beta okay we know 80 we know 60 we know this angle and it's an included angle so that means we're going to utilize the cosine rule here okay so now to find pr squared according to the cosine rule it's going to be equal to that side so that's 80 squared plus that side is 60 squared minus 2 times 80 times 60 times the cos of alpha plus beta okay now let's find out what this is 80 squared plus 60 squared is equal to 10,000 okay so this is 10,000 minus let's see here 2 times 80 times 60 minus 9,600 times cos of alpha plus beta okay uh, let's see if we can factorize that we definitely can factorize a hundred out of there so we can factorize 100 out of there if we factorize 100 from there that means there's a hundred left inside minus factorize that uh, that is 96 cos of alpha plus beta okay the question now is can we factorize something out there well yes i think we can take out fours from there so let's factorize that so the four will just remain there and if i take out four from there i'm left to 25 if i take out four from there i'm left to 24 cause of alpha plus beta now remember this is equal to pr squared so if i want to find pr i'm going to have to take the square root of this whole thing okay now the square root of 400 because remember from your rules of thirds if this is multiplying to that you can take the square root separately so you can take the square root of 400 which is i think is 20 let's just make sure of that yes it's 20 times the square root of 25 minus 24 cos alpha plus beta okay now this is the length of pr so now i must go and substitute it back over here so PQ is equal to PR, which is that thingy that we just found, cos alpha plus beta times the sine of 30. Don't you know the sine of 30? You can check with the calculator. Oh, it's a half. So that's times a half. So if this is multiplying by a half, obviously it's going to divide by 2 and give us 10. So this then becomes equal to 10 times 25 minus 24 cos alpha plus beta. And it has been proved. Okay, uh, example 3. Uh, reads like this a building is situated opposite a telecommunication tower from k where's k oh there's k a window in the building the elevation to t from the, uh, the top of the tower is theta so there's the angle of elevation theta over here 
also from k the angle of depression to the foot of the tower is alpha so there is the alpha the building and the foot of the tower are in the same horizontal plane so that means this and that make 90 degrees the height of the tower is h meters so the height from there to there tf is h so here's the question prove that bf is equal to that okay where is bf there is bf over here so that's what we need to find now question now is how are we going to find bf well let's first of all understand one thing this is parallel to that so that means this angle is alpha because they alternate all right so in order to find bf okay in order to find bf bf is the adjacent of alpha and fk is the hypotenuse so what then that means is that to find the cause of alpha i'm going to take bf which is the adjacent over kf which is the hypotenuse this one right so what that then means is that bf is equal to kf times cos alpha now the question is how am i supposed to find kf okay so now we have to find kf so we also need to ask ourselves what do we know okay we know this side of the triangle is h we know this is kf right we know this angle theta plus alpha okay we know two sides we know one angle so that means we need to utilize the uh, sign rule there okay because we need to find the kf all right so kt should we be worried about that well not really okay so i think we are now going to use the sign rule there so h divided by sine of that and kf divided by sine of that okay now here's one thing that you should remember if i extend this line over there that means this is going to make a 90 degrees because that's parallel to that so what it means is that this theta and that are complementing each other so that means the angle over there is 90 minus theta okay so now i can effectively use my sine rule okay so now we're gonna write by sine rule okay by sine rule kf over the sine of 90 minus theta is equal to h over the sine of alpha plus theta okay now we should also remember by our core function rules sine 90 minus theta is the same as the cos of theta if you remember those uh, core function rules so let me write that remember cos theta is equal to the sine of 90 minus theta so that means kf this is now cos theta is equal to h over sine alpha plus theta okay cross multiply so that i get left with kf so cross multiply by cos theta both sides which means kf is equal to h times cos theta over sine alpha plus theta okay now this kf we have to substitute it back into v okay so the line bf now is equal to kf we know what that is that's h cos theta over sine alpha plus theta 
times the cos alpha which is already there and after multiplying remember if you multiply you can put in any order over sine alpha plus theta okay and that has been shown so what i now need you to do there are some exercises that are there on this topic on lesson eight please go through the exercises just let me know via whatsapp via the email or comment on this video if you are actually working on this it will be also good for me to know who is going through the work and thank you for watching we'll see you next time